what a beautiful morning. We are on Praline. And uh, this is the island for me to for the black first. Instead of Janice, self-catering. We already been to the beach to make some uh, sunrise recordings. And uh, it's very hot. It's not windy here, so the sea is very calm. You can walk for long, you can swim, no waves. I have the long trousers. And the long trousers at the moment for for the mosquitoes uh, and the sunburn I already have. Took some short ones for later on. But so far I can still deal with the long clothes. Uh, yeah, and we are on our way now to Valedime. Let's go, get the bus. <laughs> Valedime is a nature park and a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which consists of a well-preserved palm forest with the endemic speciality Coco de Mer palm five other endemic palm trees, which are found nowhere else in the Seychelles and the entire Indian Ocean. It is one of these must-see natural places in the world, which might make you feel a bit like being back in Gondwanaland time. You tell me you're maybe in one of the oldest forests of the world. Is this I, amazing or not? It's amazing. Well, good morning, yeah. this is Karasan still, mm -hmm. and you are? Fania. Fania, you are yeah. working here in Villa de Mar. Yes. Okay, and we are here with uh, the symbol of mm -hmm. Okay. and this is the Coco de Mer? Yes. Okay, yes. how old is this fruit? Um, actually, it's about uh, the money for one adult tree, it, it uh, takes for 25 years. And so many more years for the maturity. Okay, so the tree needs 25 years uh, yeah. till it's adult, yeah. and then it needs six or seven years yeah. to grow the fruit. Yeah. Wow, okay. and this is seven, six, seven years old? Yes. Wow, amazing. Yeah. But this has such a strange shape. The shape of this is different? Yes, because we need, yes, the India trees come with the cover. Ah! Protected, but you need to remove the cover for you to see the shape inside. This is seven years. Yes. Wow. And then this mm -hmm. one is flat because it's sometimes we have two together or three together. Well, still heavy, but not as heavy as I thought, actually. Yeah. So, wow. So this is a fruit already. Mm -hmm. that and that, that, yes. and how, how to eat it, actually? You still cut it open? Mm -hmm. uh, how is it from inside? Is it fleshy or is it so drinkable? No, actually, or? it's eatable when it's young. You can eat it, but from ah. as from seven months until nine months. But ah, you can only that, eat it when it's young. Yes, because it looks like a clear jelly inside. Uh -huh. No water, just a clear jelly. And, and that jelly is like coconut, or does it taste different? Normally, this is different. Uh, is it but sweet? For now, it isn't because it's forbidden to eat. We are protected. Ah. But uh, after nine months, yeah. you can have it. This is the best that's from inside the kernel. Okay. okay. So they cut it in two to yeah. remove it and then they stick it back together and then cut it back, they spread it for yeah. seven All the seeds that you have, you try to grow new plants with it or how yeah. is it? But what happens with the seeds that are not good? I mean, how, how do you plant them? You, you put this in the ground? No. I mean, how do they grow? When it's fall down, yeah. you just move it. Yeah, at the place. I just keep on here. Oh, okay. Then it's starting to grow. It's a young one. Oh, it's only one year, because it's only one this year. One Every leaf, it's only for one year. One leaf, out for one year. Yes. Ah, and That's you see right. the rings on the tree, yes, yeah? Yes. And one ring, one, sh one yes, leaf. Yes, like ah, that. okay, interesting. You leave it here, you didn't move it, then it's grow naturally. Yes. Ah. But some we pick up to turn it for souvenirs. Mm -hmm. We cut it in to remove the kernel and stick it back together. Yeah. And send it back here. To is it is it allowed to export to mm -hmm. Europe or somewhere? Yes. Yeah. So if you have the set, set certificate on. But ah, it's with the yeah. certification. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. This is the middle one. This is how but the you cannot make a souvenir with it because it's fiber inside. After that, it's just. Rotten. But oh. the female one it's forever. Oh. They get the spurs to yeah, pollinate the them? Yes, from the, the, the male to the female. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So the brown... So, this is so the all these fruits are the females? Yes, those. Ah. It's like well, doesn't this look amazing? <laughs> Thank you for having the interview. <laughs> and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The male flowers of the magical Coco de Mer palms are arranged in a catkin-like inflorescence up to one meter long, 
which continues to produce pollen over a 10-year period, one of the longest in fluorescence is known. Flowers are loved by lots of Seychelles endemics, such as the Fasuma geckos, endemic slugs and the Seychelles parrot. All of them are part of spreading the male pollen to the female's flowers. The female's flowers are the largest of any palm, but unfortunately I missed to see them. And it is the most efficient plant known at recovering nutrient from moribund leaves. It is restricted now to fewer than six locations and it is estimated that the population has declined by more than 30% over three generations. It is still threatened by fires and harvesting of the kernels is a significant additional threat. It is therefore listed as endangered. The Seychelles parrot, also named Seychelles black parrot, belongs to one of the rarest parrots in the world and is restricted to wooded habitats on Praline only. Sometimes they are also found on Curios, but they do not seem to nest there. It is the only surviving endemic parrot of the Seychelles, that formerly occurred on Arid and Marian as well. It feeds principally on fruits, wild ones and cultivated ones, flowers and buds, but also leaves and tree bark. Although protected, it is still threatened by illegal persecution outside of its protected area and by nest hole competition with the common miners and predation by introduced rats. They mainly nest in tree cavities and dead cocodemia trees and breeding activity fluctuates widely between the years. The conservation action on Pralin for them is huge. Lots of artificial nest boxes are provided and education programs and schools are done. Most serious current threat for these parrots are diseases such as Psittacina big and feather disease and nest predation by rats and cats. They are still competing with lots of the other introduced birds for food and nest sites and they are threatened by habitat destruction by fires, pesticides and netting bats and inbreeding. A national action plan for them was produced in 2009 that concluded a captive breeding program for them on Frigate and Ile de Nord. But despite all this intense research on this species, this action plan still didn't seem to have started.
elevation, humidity, heat. I think things that are killing me here again. But yet it's so beautiful here. And this not really going for an forest, but uh, in any case, the Coco de Mer forest. It was an undisturbed virgin forest until 1930. It is a dry forest and the leaf litter by dead Coco de Mer palms are an increasing risk for fires. Lots of fires have spread in the past already across praline and Curios, so many immature trees now remain over large parts of these islands. You find a lot of geckos and skinks. They always go on a sunny patch to get warm. And uh, it's amazing. It's right in front of it. Most probably you can see it now because he's having so much light on his body. But uh, actually it's just right there. I will show you a photo later. You see? Now it's moved. <laughs> the Seychelles kings are the only common terrestrial diurnal lizard found on most of the islands here. They are endemic to the Seychelles and compared to the other lizards, they lack necks and have long tails that can easily be shed. They are relatively shy on heavily populated islands, but can be very tame and inquisitive on smaller offshore islands, often coming close to human in search for food. They feed on a variety of insects, fruits, small skinks, drop fish and carry on as well, which might be a good reason why they are more numerous on islands with large seabird colonies. Arid and Cousin inhabit the most dense lizard population on this planet. One hectare, more than 4,000 individuals were counted on one day. They breed throughout the year, the females burrowing two to six eggs in the soil or under stones that hatch after 60 days. Their lifespan is unknown, but some might get 50 years old. Quite fascinating for such a little creature. I'm at the view out point um, in Val de Mar still and um, I was told that the bobos come quite close so I hope that's my final chance to get them trying since a few days and the loudest birds but they're actually not coming that close so let's see if we get them like on two three meter distance I'm waiting for them the Seychelles Bobul is another granitic island endemic and one of the birds I really wish to see from close. But that they would come as close as my chicken here at the park's view out point I never even had dreamed of. They are commonly found on most of the larger granitic islands. They move through the trees in noisy groups, often family members, mainly in highland forests. They are good voice imitators of several birds, such as the common miner and the Seychelles parrot. They feed on fruits and insects, lizards and bird eggs, but also flowers and nectar. They are nesting usually 10 meter high in a tree where two eggs are laid, but often only one chick reaches adulthood.
I think they even eat from your hand because it came so close to me and it did peck at my bag. I did you think that I had something in it? Amazing. They are very aggressive towards other bird species and can chase away birds large as the green backed herons in areas where they are feeding. Territories are strongly defended in breeding season against all intruders, like other bulbuls or potential predators, including men. You see the slugs moving even. Oh, the white slugs, that's cool. It's really cool. The mm -hmm. white slug is endemic. Endemic to Seychelles, but only to Prana. Mm -hmm. Dora. Dora, oh. cool. I was called Dora ever when I was younger. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. So you are actually, you just showed me something amazing here. What are we filming now? Now we are filming the Bromsa gecko. Mm -hmm. The biggest gecko that we have in the park. Mm -hmm. And also we got the white slug. Yeah. And the white slug is endemic. Endemic to Seychelles, but endemic only to Prana. That's really amazing because that's one of the infos I have not found yet. So you're just actually showing me. Yes. So happy to meet you. So we have discovered things that... They're really huge, the slugs. They are very huge, yes. And for their defense, they do bite, huh? Mm-hmm. Better not touch them, though. <laughs> also, no. <laughs> so this is the largest gecko there is, right? Yes. yes. Okay, and amazing. When you're on the Seychelles and you're standing close to a Cocodamea palm, have a look at the male flowers and when you see them, you most probably find them abundant with lots of wildlife. White slugs are endemic to Mahe, Silhouette and Pralin, but only here on Pralin they are light creamy white colored, whereas on the other islands they are more dullish sandy colored. And they can grow till 15 cm long. They are often found in Vincenti to the green day geckos, but here we have discovered the giant bronzer gecko. The largest of all geckos here is a rare and ecologically specialized species with a highly localized distribution and its ecology is poorly known. It is threatened by habitat loss and listed as vulnerable because it is only known to exist from two small locations on Pralin and Silhouette. It's an arboreal species, found in forests with a canopy over 50 meters and largely feeds on nectar and pollen from coco de mer palms. In 2016 finally a tagging and tracking program was done where 666 species were called by Chris Tag, a British biology student. And besides measuring them and DNA samples, some species were tagged with some subcutaneous passive integrated transponder and some other adult geckos fitted with a radio transmitter attached by a small backpack that holds the transmitter on their backs. It is a low density species that creeps slowly over the coco de mer nuts or flowers and due to the shade of the trees and its cryptic color, it is often very hard to be recognized. Deep here. <sighs> this is an exhausting walk. I don't think it's a good idea to come back. Yeah, it's too steep. I say like it's half an hour and we thought like oh maybe it's ten minutes, but now we know this mountain is really steep to go to the Anz Lazio beach. If you come from the west, it's really exhausting. And you need definitely half an hour. I think more 45 minutes like the girl told us yesterday. And uh, so I better go back by bus on the eastern side. I think we reached. This looks uh, paradisely.
And I'm here with one of the people working here. You are? Jason Bastille, assistant park officer. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Since how many years you work here? Twelve years now. Twelve years, okay. That's a long time. You still love enjoying this island? I mean, twelve years? Definitely. You must, you Nature must. Nature is my passion. Okay, okay. What is this island mainly about? The main thing that we do here is the protection of all terrestrial as well as aquatic life forms okay, in yeah. the park. Okay? okay. So the main attraction on this island would have to be the giant land tortoises. Mm, which is the Aldabra right. ones, right? Yes. Yes, we only have the, the Aldabra species here at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Because you see the original species that were on this island were run down to extinction because sailors used to collect them as a source of food. Yeah. Mm. You know, mm. They can survive for two or three months yeah. without food or water. Yeah. Nature takes its course. And we try and locate where the nests are during the breeding season. And are you kind of protecting the nests from predators, like the yes, miners or something? Yes. Uh, well, normally the natural land, land the, the land crabs will be the natural predators on the island, but there's also pests that were introduced like rats, rats. a long time yeah. ago. When you still have rat traps here? or? Well, we use different methods of uh, lowering the, the population. We can't eradicate them to totally, considering the, the size of the island. And see. all the boats that um, used yeah, to arrive here still? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe? Well, well, who knows? <laughs> yeah, because uh, it's just the island is about 707 acres large. Okay. So, so it's, close it's the fifth to largest Grenadine island. Yeah. So there's a lot of habitat where they can stay and it's difficult to eradicate them. Totally. We may use live traps and then sometimes we use poisons okay. with, that we use in bait stations. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right. Um, I see you mark them with like a number on their okay, uh, shields. Okay, yeah. Now those were old forms of, of tagging systems when we're doing our population census to determine how many oh, tortoises okay, okay. we have on the island. But right now what we do is we, we have a little chip that we inject underneath the skin. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. And we use a barcode the scanner. Okay. A scanner machine to actually check out the number and then it will determine. Okay. Do you like to explain yes. something about the walking trail possibility? So the trail starts off in the granitic rocks just behind over there, of which you go into a mangrove. Yeah. And then you follow the coast onwards up to the main uh, visitor center called the doctor's house. This is where Dr. William McGregor used to stay when he used to take care of lateral patients a long time ago. So now it's just a visitor center. He is the one that started with the tortoises, or no, I'm he, not familiar he, with him. He, he's a, he was a medical officer of all the inner islands, and oh, he used okay. to take care of leper patients. Mm -hmm. So that we allow people on the first main beach, yeah. and then the whole area is also uh -huh. cut off. And we don't allow boats anywhere okay, okay, okay. in the back. And is it more interesting to make bird photography if you walk this trail, or? Uh, it all depends what it is you want to see. For example, on this trail, you you get to see the endemic cocoa de mer trees that are growing on We've the island. We've seen them in Valdemai already. Yes, we've seen those already. So uh, you also get a, a clear view because our highest point is 172. So yeah. always the trails lead at the lowest points of the hills, yeah. and you get to see neighboring islands, for example. Yeah, okay. Plus, there's a lovely beach. It's best you use the, the route going to the doctor's house because yeah. as you go into the mangroves, that's where you get to see quite a few of the migratory birds and some birds that are normally feeding off the species of fish that we have. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, introduce me to two of your family members, please. Yeah. These are two males. Can, if I'm not familiar with what right. how can I see it immediately? So uh, the best way Scales? to figure this out is you feel underneath the shell. Underneath if the it's shell. concave, it means it's a male. If it's flat, it's a female. So that when it's a mating uh, season. Uh, According to Sisawa tradition, if I had a young daughter, I'd give a baby tortoise as a wedding gift. He is very <laughs> hungry. <laughs> Look, there he comes, there he goes. <laughs> Do you know the names of them or is it more about numbers? Oh no, it's more about numbers. Yeah? Yeah, but we tend to give those that have certain characteristics nicknames. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I'm in love with them. Oh, so nice. <laughs> All people that come here love them, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> if they're not afraid of them, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Thank you a lot. Okay. And have a, um, have a nice day and we will go on and make some photos and videos. Okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> have a nice day. The Aldabra tortoises are amongst the longest living animals on the planet. 
Some are thought to be more than 200 years old, but it is difficult to verify because they tend to outlive their human observers. They are endemic to the Aldabra Atoll only, but are already historically kept on several granitic islands as pets by people. The other original endemic two species from the Granitics are all long extinct in the wild, but some individuals still retain certain characteristics of these two species. Ruddy turnstones are seen in many coastal areas worldwide. This sandpiper is a highly migratory bird that breeds in the northern parts of Europe and Northern America and flies south to winter on coastlines almost worldwide. Hello, Tom! <laughs> Some of the mangrove crabs are having a lazy day here in the low tide. Which of the Seychelles 32 species I am observing here I can't tell. Maybe a red claw crab again. Alabra tortoises. Males can weigh up to 250 kg. Females are somewhat smaller and can reach a weight of 160 kg. But I must say, I wouldn't be much amused to have such a motorbike on my back. Still, this female is silent, like they used to be, while this male here is loudly roaring. They can swim well, but are slow on land. They mainly lay eggs in between June and September. 10 to 25 eggs are laid in an excavated nest hole covered with sand. And the baby tortoises need usually 8 months to hatch. And normally less than half of the clutches are fertile. Most Aldabra tortoises, unless on St. Anne Mare National Park and here on Curios, on the other islands are kept in enclosures to prevent them from road kills by cars. They are one of the largest tortoises in the world and as the largest animal in their environment they perform a role similar to that of the elephants. In search for food they fell trees and create pathways which are used by other animals. Our short visit to Curios was not planned well as we did not exactly know where and when to get there. <laughs> something to do more often, right? Yeah, it's something to do more often and I must start doing it seriously. So the last boat taxi already picked us up again, doing a nice extra round circling around little rocky island Saint Pierre, which seems to be great for snorkeling. I will have to try this out next time.
In the morning at our guest house beach, I filmed two different looking herons, of which this is one of them. And it took me more than a year to find out that these two were adult and immature, which are looking so differently. This is the juvenile, it's a green-backed heron. They are common residents on the Seychelles with its subspecies Degans and can be found on most of the islands here. They typically creep along open muddy shorelines in search for food or over rocks or wetland edges. They mainly eat small fish, frogs, invertebrates or wait on fisher boats to catch fish from there. And this adult here has already spotted its fish, I guess. They may breed all year round and young birds that feel threatened give a display by stretching out their neck and pointing the bill skywards. Summerling is a long-distance migrant that breeds high in the Arctic tundra and winters south as far as South Africa or annually here in the Seychelles as well. The peak time to find them here is in between October and December. And another grey plover in search for food, accompanied by some hard-eyed coast crabs. Their non-breeding plumage, as you can see here, is almost fully white apart from some dark shoulder patches. They feed on invertebrates buried in the sand in the upper and tidal zones. People might most probably find you here at the beach in Grand Sans. Yeah, all the time. I will always be here on the beach. Okay. And you like birds as well? Yes. What's your favorite bird? A frigate. I was working on Adapa for six months. Okay. And I was doing the con conservation. Yeah. And, and you worked with all the birds or with a certain bird? Or? A certain bird. And that was? The frigate bird. Ah. The grill. Yeah. And also like this. What do you do with the birds and ring them, monitor them? I mean, yeah, we also take the blood sample. Aha, uh -huh. for the DNA or yeah. for sicknesses? For... for DNA and sicknesses. Okay, and what else? And uh, we are doing a, a survey on the ready school bulbul. Yeah, yeah we try to eliminate them because they were a threat to the others.
Tropical sea water, mm -hmm. the biggest population of uh, tropic birds, and we have two species here: we have the red tail and the white tail. But so, only a few red tails, right? Like three pair, I did read, or more? Yeah. Okay. So we will, would be lucky if we can see them. Yeah, we'd be lucky if you see a red tail. Arid is the northernmost granitic island and has lived dramatical changes in the past 200 years. Like most of the other Seychelles islands, Arid was heavily cleared for coconut plantations in the 18th century and the copra area persisted well to the 20th century. Dogs, pigs, cats and chicken were brought, but somehow Arid escaped by being invaded by rats. For almost a century, sooty turn eggs were harvested with up to 200,000 being removed each season. Not surprisingly, the number of nesting seabirds declined and all endemic land birds were wiped out. However, in 1967, the island's owner Paul Jennard keased egg collecting and declared the island as a reserve. And we're very close to the fairy turns, finally. I'm searching for them the whole time. These birds are just magnificent. This is Joan Michel, and uh, he's one of our guides today. You were? Jean Claude. Jean Claude. And uh, tell us something about the fairy trends. You like them? That's the first event. Those are fairy trends. Those are fairy trends. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, I got it wrong. Sorry. <laughs> this one was a fairy trend. Yeah. This one is a white tail tropic bird. White tail tropic bird. And why are they not disturbed? Because there's no rats here, there's and no, no people rats. living here, and no dogs. Well, there are people living here, but there are no dogs. There's never been rats here. Mm. So uh, they don't, uh, they don't uh, know what a rat looks like. We have uh, mice, but it's not a problem for them. Mice are very small, yeah. so it's, uh, they, they, they did nothing with it uh, on their eggs or on their chick. How many years ago did the hunting on the birds here from the sea um, people actually change? Like 100 years ago, when, when did they stop eating the birds here? Because well, I did read about that many birds been hunting for food. There, there are certain species that are targeted like uh, the wet uh, tail she water, yeah. uh, the tropical she water yeah. and the sooty turns. Okay. Those are still being targeted up Good. until now, yes. So, uh, Why is that people are not aware about the beauty of birds? Or? Well, some people uh, take things for granted, some people just doesn't care. Mm. Some people is just uh, in there for whatever financial uh, yeah. thing it can bring to them, that's it. But uh, you are making some kind of awareness programs about this? Well, it's been, it's ongoing, it's all the time okay, ongoing, you know. Is it in school, schools as well? Uh, not exactly in school, but uh, oh, it's, it's uh, more or less on, uh, you see, because it's still legal to pick yeah. up, uh, on certain islands, it's yeah. still legal to pick up their eggs, sooty turn eggs. Wow. So that's one species where mm -hmm. their eggs are being picked up and sell yeah. on normal uh, market, I mean, uh, oh, wow. uh, common uh, marketplace on Mahi, yeah. Pral and Ladi. Is there something we can do about we can do about this? Well, uh, you just uh, have to... Talk with people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's it. Uh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. well, it's okay. amazing. We have to see a lot here. We don't have so much time, but I will make some little photos of the nesting white tail. Okay, the and there's one also here, younger. Them. Like the one that is still in cotton. Ah. So we grade it as one seed. You see, then we get the other when they start flying. Yeah. So this is the other female. This is a this is a two seed. It's not a, another. It's still a juvenile. The white-tailed tropic birds breed throughout the tropical seas except for the East Pacific. It's the smallest of its genus, and the subspecies found on the Seychelles is the Lepturus. My no, my hand. You took my hand. Yeah. Wow. Whee! Purplish red. Wow. So this is an adult or still yes, a juvenile? Yes, uh, this is an adult. Is this a female? It, yes, it's a female. You see the eggs on there? Yeah, mm. I, I did see yeah, one, yeah. Is there more than one egg? Yeah, no, only one egg. Okay, yeah, yeah. Wow. And they don't move even. They're no, not afraid. They're not afraid because they knew they've been protected.
We will leave her with rest now. Yes, we pick her. Oh, we don't have to take. Yeah. Oh, wow, it's amazing. <laughs> it sounds. I'm on Harriet, and this is like a paradise for birds, and of course for me. They breed on tropical islands by laying only one egg directly on the ground or a cliff edge. Because the male yeah. has the biggest head. Ah, only because of the head? Yes, just, just because of the color is all the same, but only the skull is bigger. Yeah. And the male is bigger, the head is bigger than the female. Right behind me is its mate that has arrived back from feeding from the sea. <coughs> and its incubation switching turn. Which crab is this? We call it Bena Hermit. Which hermit? Bena. Bena Hermit. Yeah. Okay. It's here all over the island? Yes, sir. Mostly, but they are not dangerous for the eggs of the birds. What's the name of these crabs? Ghost crabs. These are the ghost crabs? Yeah. Mm. Nice ah, why do they come out? Because you walk here? Yeah. Calling the robin? Yes. Yeah. How can I know, eh? I just suggest. <laughs> it must be like that. You can get it close as you want. Pegging hmm? has been done, right? You uh, do you protect their nests? Yeah. Well, we, we, we monitor them. Yeah, but you not like do protect them. There's, I mean, there's no predators here for them, right? No. Now oh, there's two. Seen that? That's not there. Okay, now. Yeah. She is inviting him for yeah, a courtship. Yeah. That's courtship going on right now. Yeah. yeah. We are so lucky. They do that whenever they find another pairs reaching their territories. Yeah. Both of them will do that. But ah. when the female wants to attract the male, I've, I've noticed they also do that. Okay. Because they are highly territorial birds. Yeah. And. Uh, Unless they've mated, the male will not allow the female on feeding the same and, place. Uh, because so, females and males have territories? No, no, no. They have the same territory, the, oh, okay, okay. the male and the female. Okay. But the male is the dominant one, the alpha male. Okay. So if uh, there's a piece of eating area here, feeding yeah. area here, uh, the male will have the first say. Yeah, okay. The male will feed, yeah. and then when he leaves, the yeah. female yeah. will get what it is left. Guys, this is so amazing. We are with the size of magpie robin now. And they are so friendly. They come so close. It's amazing. They are doing a long time now a conservation project for birds. And how many birds are here now? Here we've got 10. Only 10? Yeah. Ooh. On Arvid and uh, in the whole of uh, Seychelles, yeah. well, which means in the whole world, because those birds are endemic. Yeah. Uh, there are around 250 to 300. Some islands are still in the process of... And which other islands are there at the moment? And Cousin? Uh, Brigade, Cousin, Uze, and Bird. Oh, okay. Bird are little folks. So if you want to see one of the rarest birds of the world, just come to Aries <laughs> and you could, you could think they're pets, but they're not. This is really nice birding. So the birds are very short distance from the ground. Let's see, I can bring it here. Really? Let's see, I scratch here on the ground. Like this. Show me. Now the male is coming. Have a look. Now, it must have mated. Last week, Yeah. if you were here, yeah. the male would have chased <coughs> everyone away. away. Oh, okay. By now. Because they already prepared them next. And wow. it's already been done, and I'm sure that uh, this week, I'm sure that there will be an egg inside. I like the way they hold up their tail. Yeah.
So I heard that the magpie robins here eat a lot of the skinks. Yep. We have three different skinks here. We have the bigger one, which is the right skinks. We have the seashell skink, which is a little bit smaller. And then we have the burrowing skink or the blind, blind skink, if you like, oh. which are nocturnal and they uh -huh. have that food and they stay under the soil. But the magpie robins find them? Well, uh, sometimes, oh, okay. yes. As soon as they pop their head out, if there's yeah. a magpie robin around, yeah. they have to run for their life. <laughs> so are they specialized in eating the skinks or do the magpie robins eat everything that is like carnivorous or are they like omnivorous? Or? No, no, no. They will eat any burrowing skink, the black ah, one. So that's but, a favorite uh, food. Yeah. But the other ones, uh, the, the right skink and the seashell skink, they are eaten, they are predated on when they are still very young. Uh -huh. Baby skinks, mm -hmm. if you like. And uh, once they uh, turn into adults, they find common ground to coexist. What bird is this? This is a, this is a seawater, but this is the tropic one. This is a new species. Oh, wow. Since when does uh, it nest here? The, the, the started this year. Wow. It's a new species. Is the first pair nesting here or more pair? We got more pairs nesting around wow. the island now. How, how old is this young one? This is uh, about, uh, about uh, one month. Okay. Come here later, you know, Salah. This should be around uh, a month, three huh? weeks. Yes, a month. Did you see this, Otam? No. Yeah, you're too fast sometimes. No, no, I missed it. <laughs> what I didn't know on my visit to the Seychelles was that the name fairy tern is incorrect for this well beautiful common white tern. The correctly named fairy tern is Sternula nedais, which looks very different. These white terns are also called angel terns or white noddies, and that should be their appropriate English name given to them, since recent DNA studies have found out that they are more genetically related to the noddies than to the terns. It's roosting, right? incubating an egg. It is. Yeah. Wow. These graceful birds are the world's only white plumage tern and the subspecies Candida is found on the Seychelles. So you're monitoring the territories? We monitor, we have uh, seven for the ferry turns, we have seven uh, different areas where we monitor weekly uh, we're doing a breeding success. Okay. So. Uh, and you mark it with these orange with this, bands this in the is, trees. Yeah, the orange band is for the fairy tern. The red band is for white-tailed tropic birds. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is not the date. Yeah. It says the month, which is November. Yeah. And this is the 22nd yeah. egg yeah. found in November. In this tree? No, no, all over the island. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, well, in the plateau. Yeah. To be exact. Yeah. So uh, if you see a number after uh, the month, it's yeah. not the date. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's I get it. It's the egg. egg, yeah. So November 22 is this one up there, that C2 up there. When they're that old, oh. we call them a C2. This one just laid, this one just laid, and this one there just laid. They nest in loose colonies and lay the egg directly on the fork of a branch or depression on the twig which gives a greater risk for the egg to be fallen, but might be a good way to reduce parasites, which in some seabird colonies can cause the abandonment of the entire colony. In case of losing the egg, it is very quick to relay one. And I am here very fascinated to see the chicks sitting on the branches, waiting for their parents to return with food. Fairy turns are given that name fairy turns, because when, once they form a couple, uh, a male and a female, when they start breeding, they, uh, let's say, over 98% of the time, uh, they stick together. They don't change partners. So, yeah, very sincere birds. Uh, that's why they give given uh, the name fairy turn, mainly. It dips to snatch small fish from the surface of the sea in the manner of the lesser noddy. It's a long living bird that has been recorded to live for 42 years. It breeds throughout the Seychelles and can be seen often in pairs almost everywhere on the coastlines, but in greater numbers on rat free islands. A very nice fairy turn with a long blue bill and the white plumage. They really look like fairies. They're all nesting. They're in the right moment to come here to see them nesting, having the little chicks in different ages. Uh, I don't know what to say. This is one of the most paradise islands I've been so far. But we have to hurry. 
The Seychelles warbler was once critically endangered and only still found on a small area on Cousin. But due to great conservation work, fortunately it is now found back in good numbers on Cousin, Cousin, Denis and Arid. It's so lovely to be here. We are just watching the waves, the turquoise water and all the birds flying. Which birds do we have here? Please tell me. Uh, the most common ones here are the frigate birds, <coughs> both species, the lesser and the greater. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have, of course, uh, the fairy terns, mm -hmm. bridal terns, some uh, lesser noddies and some brown noddies. Then uh, we have a few bridal terns and the white-tailed tropic birds. Uh, a certain uh, uh, month of the year, especially from February to March, you, uh, you can see the red tail coming in. The red-tailed tropic birds. Red tail yeah. tropic birds. I've, of which you one. might have three pairs. Yeah, I saw one uh, uh, last week, last Saturday, mm -hmm. to be exact. And uh, it's probably the only one now. And down there in the water, the, the turtle is back up again. Ah, the turtle is back up again. I can zoom this in for everyone to see. And uh, when it's uh, the uh, breeding season of the seabird, the peak of the breeding season, which is uh, June, uh, around June, July, and August, we do have roseate turns. That is Here. the hawksbill turtle. Yeah, hawksbill. And I heard that the roseate terns are some of the most beautiful you have. They are. You, you've been told the right thing, yes. I agree with that. Okay, because of the shape of their crest and the head or...? Yeah, the, yeah, they've got different colors. They've got yeah. greyish, white... White and yellow. <coughs> uh, feathers and they've got... Uh, more or less red orange uh, uh, feet mm -hmm. and they've got uh, some sort of orange uh, red uh, bill. Yeah, what about the red fitted boobies? The Might they be here as well sometimes? Occasionally see one or two in this area Because they're mainly on Bird Island? They're mainly found uh, on the outer islands. Oh, okay, on the outer islands, yeah, okay. Yeah, you will find them um, uh, Cosmoledo, Aldabra, Farqua, mm -hmm. those places like that, mm -hmm. Alphonse Island. Yeah. They are more common there. So you're coming here daily also to make photographs. You can't stop uh, making photographs and seeing I the birds. You can't stop enjoying this. I, I make my, my uh, hard drive is full. full. I've never been at a seashore point like this surrounded by thousands of shorebirds and uh, it's so amazing i could stay here the whole day to watch them take photos i just listen to them see them shitting <laughs> in the water <laughs> or uh, just enjoy life within the seychelles the greater and lesser frigate bird are found with a large roosting colony of the greater frigate bird here on arid both though do only breed on the Aldabra Atoll with an incubation time of 120 days. Their long distance flyers, one ringed bird on Aldabra Atoll was found later on 4,400 km away. They spend most of their life gliding across the oceans, rarely flapping wings, but unlike other seabirds they have poor waterproofing and no web feet. Since they are unable to land on water and dive for food, they must pick prey from the water surface or attack other birds to make them give up their prey. Young birds depend on their parents for over a year, so they can only breed every few years. And they are long living birds, one was found to have survived 34 years.
one of the best islands I've seen in my whole life. The Seychelles 4D is called Tok Tok in Creole. Maybe Costa Bill is a good tool in tipping eggs like from fairy turns from branches to the ground to smash and eat them. The introduction of the more colorful Madagascar 40 has greatly wiped out the Seychelles 40s since they compete for food in the same areas. It is now restricted to Frigate, Cousin, Cousin, Arid, Dennis and Daros. It was usually found around houses as well where they fed on insects and seeds. They are very social birds and often found in groups of 10 or more. In the time that people still harvested seabird eggs legally on these islands, these bodies were seen as a pest. Now boas are protected and survive alongside each other. They are very good parents, boas take well care of the chicks and they mate for life. Their status is still near threatened, so I'm still lucky to see one more of these islands endemics so close by, just on my cam and the table, which fortunately managed to survive our human impacts, ironically, once again with our help. Today the island is dedicated to conservation only, supported by ecotourism. The only inhabitants are the island's conservation staff working for ICS. For me, Arid was like Galapagos. The birds here had no fear of humans, so you can see them from very close by. They all have to push the boat.